What's going on guys? 4.0 Kev here, working on Project Exploder, uh, February 4th, 2017. Probably going to get uploaded next week, so I believe the 12th of February. Um, what I'm working on is my heater hose. As you know, on these 4.6, 5.4, and um, I believe the 6.8 liters, they have like that heater core issue where they have the V. And it's plastic, and after a while, with expansion with the heat and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold, it messes around with the o-ring on V. I'll show you the part on um, what I did. So basically, it goes from the return line from the thermostat housing to the heater core inlet down to the rear AC inlet. So basically, the model Explorer I have has front and rear AC and also front and rear heat all the way in the back too because it's a seven passenger or something like that so um it has front it has a front heater core and a rear heater core and it has a distribution on some of the 4.6s that they have out there without the rear heater it still has the distribution but it doesn't go down it just splits out into into like um a y this one goes from a y to another y i'll show you that right now so i have the line already unhooked um, don't make fun of me on how I fixed that other one temporarily because it was leaking really bad. Like every time I would park it, I would lose like a gallon of coolant. So um, I got my part from Napa. Why? I don't really like getting Napa parts, but I got it at a reasonable price due to my shop. And it was a really good deal. I paid $97 without tax. It, it got here like a day after. I just didn't install it until now because I didn't have time. Long story short is AutoZone had it for $175, uh, Advance had it for $130 plus tax, and I got mine from Advance Auto Port Pro. Oh, yeah, uh, Rock Auto had it for a hundred bucks, but you have to pay for shipping. So either way, you're losing. This one I got is uh, part number. Eight two seven five seven two six dash one Napa Solutions engine heater hose assembly is quantity of one and I paid ninety seven dollars shipped to my shop um paid with credit card not credit card my debit card and um it has the upgraded metal piece instead of the plastic piece that Ford comes with so it shouldn't leak anymore because it's an easy job but it's a pain in the butt to get underneath that fender and um so let me show you guys what the old part did, did where it messed up where it could mess up on the 4.6 5.4 and 6.8 liters three valve engines for the ford modular v8 this right here is the new part as you can see there's that metal piece right there that's the upgraded metal and if you guys are wondering that's the part number and this is the old part so basically this comes from the thermostat goes all the way down to the distribution distribution goes from like this it goes to a rear heater core inlet to a um i believe a check valve for the radiator so when the temperature it works like a thermostat in a way it opens and closes at a certain temperature sending because the way these new explorers work let me explain to you for design it to where if the engine is cold and you turn the heat on, the heat will only stay at low. And I believe that's what why this is here, the check valve. So when the engine gets hot, I believe at 100, not hot, but like it starts going up to temp, so 110 degrees Fahrenheit, this check valve opens up and it lets um, coolant in to the heater core, which is right here. Right? The inlet. And what that does is it gives you the allowance to improve the fan speed. And that's why sometimes when you cold start these are four gens even the 4.0 models they they stay at low or even when you start driving it after like two minutes you see automatically if you have a digital which i do the digital climate control it just starts going it goes up to like four and you really don't want it there but it does it for you technology huh so that's what that check valve does it controls oops i shouldn't have done that sorry so what it was it started leaking right here right and I didn't notice it really bad until after I installed my CIA and I did like a like a hard pull on it one day going to work and I heard something go poof and I was like what the heck I got to work 
I didn't see anything wrong inside the engine bay. But after I came back, I saw I smelled coolant like crazy. And it smelled really sweet. I was like, oh man, I got a coolant leak. I checked low radiator hose, but low radiator hose was fine. Checked the upper um, thermostat housing, it was fine. I checked the upper radiator hose, it was fine. I checked everything, it was fine. Next thing you know, I start poking around and I seen this leaking the whole thing. And it was drip, drip, drip. So um, every day I would like have to keep adding coolant. So what I did was I put silicone heat resistant silicone it fixed it for a little bit but it was still leaking and uh so i finally ordered the part three weeks later i'm finally installing it <laughs> not good but yeah so let me take off this check valve put it on the new um the new inlet for the heated core and i'm gonna get it installed and then add some coolant and get it back in service so yeah All right, guys, so coming underneath the vehicle, passenger side, the inner fender and the inner fender lining has to be unclipped. And then when you literally take the inner fender and go like that, boom, look, you got your inlet line right there. See, that's a new one. What I did was, because it came from Napa, usually you kind of don't get the right size hose. I had to get a hose clamp and put it on, and I used the um, Ford clamp in the back. So that's the easiest way to get the bottom. See, you got a whole bunch of space. Um, I'm gonna leave this all unplugged still, like still loose because I wanna make sure there's no leaks. As you can tell, I added some coolant. This your inlet from the check valve. Oh, I forgot to plug this back in. So this is your vacuum line right there, that gray line. Huh? Vacuum line, check valve, goes down, gets secured to the um, engine head right there, the block, comes around, that bracket goes into your thermostat housing. Fill up with your coolant, desire whatever you want. I go with peak 5050, yellow, and add some coolant back in here. As you can tell, she's full. It's supposed to be yellow, but it's green. I go with the 50-50 peak. I flushed everything out before I did the fluid change a couple months back when I got the vehicle. So check for anything. Now you can start the vehicle, check for leaks. All right guys, so here's a cold start with the boilers and then um, turn on your heat, turn on your AC, make sure there's no leaks from the heater core lines from the main to the secondary.